This video is to explain the tap and drill chart. There are two pages of this chart, one for standard size fasteners and one for metric size fasteners. Both work the same way, so we will focus on the standard size chart since we use it more frequently in this class. There are three sections to this chart. The first outlines fastener specifications. The second outlines required tap drill sizes, and the third outlines industry standard clearance drill sizes. The fastener size section outlines the various fastener sizes and their corresponding major diameters. An important thing to note is that fasteners of a quarter inch diameter or more are designated by their major diameter, whereas fasteners less than a quarter inch are designated by a screw size. Therefore, when someone speaks of a number 10 screw, for example, they are referencing the screw size of 10 and not a 10 millimeter screw. The next part of the fastener size section is the pitch, given in threads per inch. Fasteners smaller than number 12 have two available threads per inch, UNC and UNF. UNC stands for Unified National Course, and UNF stands for Unified National Fine. The lower threads per inch listed for the fastener is the coarse thread pitch for that size, and the higher thread per inch is the fine thread pitch for that size. Number 12 fasteners and up have a third, higher thread per inch designated as UNSF. These are the Unified National Super Fine Pitches and are typically not used in the lab. Next to each pitch on the tap chart is the minor diameter of the fastener resulting from the pitch. The next section is the tap drill section. This outlines the tap drill required to correctly tap a hole for use with a standard size fastener. So first, what is tapping? Tapping refers to the operation wherein a specific tool, called a tap, is used to produce female threads inside a hole. A tap drill is a drill. It is not physically different than any other drill bit. The name is given to designate that the hole is drilled to the proper, industry standard size for tapping. Anytime a hole is tapped, the tapping operation must be preceded by use of the proper tap drill. If not, the hole may not have the proper thread engagement, or you could break the tap. Going back to the chart, there are two columns of tap drills, and they correspond to the strengths of the tapped material. If the material is soft, such as aluminum, brass, or plastics, then the column to the left is referenced for the correct tap drill size. If the material is hard, such as steel, stainless steel, or iron, then the column to the right is referenced for the correct tap drill size. Each tap drill has its size listed both as shown in the standard drill index organization, as well as its decimal equivalent in inches. The final section of the chart is the clearance drill section. This section outlines the drill size required to make a close or free fit hole for the fastener. Close fit holes have less clearance between the hole and fastener than free fit holes do. Depending on the application, a close hole may be necessary or a free fit hole may be sufficient. Again, these are industry standard. These hole callouts will be readily recognized by any machinist and any machine shop will have these drill sizes on hand. To understand this chart, we will go through an example. Consider that we need to produce a 1024 UNC tapped hole in an aluminum workpiece. The first thing to do is locate the fastener size. We see that we require a number 10 screw. Therefore, we look for the number 10 screw row on the tap and drill chart. Once located, we can move to the threads per inch column. This feature is for a 1024 UNC fastener. Therefore, we look for the 24 threads per inch row next to our number 10 fastener. With that, we can move across to the tap drill section and find our tap drill. Knowing our part is made of aluminum, we look at the column to the left that is designated for soft materials. We can find that the tap drill size for a 1024 UNC threaded hole is 0 0.157 inches. Any time a tapped hole is specified in a drawing, the tap drill must match the one outlined in the tap and drill chart. Now, 
let's assume that we need to produce a clearance hole in a second part that the first part connects to with a relatively loose tolerance. Well, we already know that the hole should be for a number 10 fastener. We also suspect that the free fit will be sufficient. So, we choose the free fit clearance drill for a number 10 fastener. Our chart tells us that this is a number 7 drill which has a diameter of 0 0.201 inches. The metric side of the chart works exactly the same way with a few minor differences. First, metric drills are specified using thread pitch rather than threads per unit length. In this case, the length is millimeters. Thread pitch equals 1 divided by the threads per millimeter. The other difference is that drill sizes are listed first in millimeters and second with the closest American drill size. This shop does not have an extensive inventory of metric drills. Thus, it is an acceptable practice to select the closest American drill size for any metric hole. With this information, you should now understand how to use the tap and drill chart. Thank you for watching. This has been the EML 2322L training series tap and drill chart video.